So someone requested that I make a video around the habits that I'm doing in each area of my life to optimize for peak performance. And I'll go a bit broader and also tell you what I've seen work best, not just for me, because that's pretty individual, but mainly the things that I've seen work for other high achievers, the people that I've worked with, and just kind of encapsulate that as a whole. Let's start with physical. So in the morning, there's four habits that I'd like to recommend to pretty much anyone that I've seen to be, we can do them in 20 minutes and I just give a very nice boost to remove all grogginess. The first thing is red light therapy and then paired with breath work. This is just really peaceful, breaks you right up. It's extremely powerful, way more beneficial than caffeine and avoiding caffeine 90 minutes after waking is something I didn't include here, but um, please do that as well. This will be way more powerful and won't affect your sleep and your overall stress levels as much. Then movement. So getting in some type of burpees, some type of run, some light kettlebell workout, you know, whatever you want to do, that can be very beneficial. And then last one is cold exposure. So getting in the shower just for, you know, three, four minutes. Doesn't matter if it's cold, you know, just it is such an easy win. First of all, if you do something like that that you don't really want to do and you just step into it and you do it, it is another easy win to encapsulate or incorporate into your day. And then secondly, it affects your neurotransmitters so positively that the rest of the day you'll be so much more uh, just happy and in a good mood, which then obviously greatly impacts your performance. Now throughout the day, there's a few different habits I'll include. So going to the gym, obviously, um, usually I'll do some sauna. I don't have access to that right now, but I'll do that again after I travel. Um, stretching a few minutes a day, because especially if you are seated a lot of the day, it's just really bad for you. You want to stretch your, your body out, make sure everything's flowing nicely. Uh, having a standing desk can be very powerful. I don't have access to that, you know, when I'm, I'm traveling, but when I'm located somewhere for a longer period of time, I pretty much always have a standing desk because of how beneficial that is for your overall well-being, how uh, fluid your body is. And the fluider, fluider, der, der, the more fluid your body is, I think the more fluid your mental state and, and how you feel and, you know, how creative you are, all of these things kind of come about as well. Then I also like to include a lot of walks throughout the day, which is just really powerful for staying sharp, and when you walk, usually you see all of these great thinkers in history, they pretty much always got their ideas when they're not doing the work itself. They're either you know, in the shower, or they're walking. These things can be extremely powerful for tapping into more creative thinking rather than just grinding all day. And that will really give you this edge over your, your competitors because you know, you're not constantly just attacking the task at hand. You're being creative, you're stepping outside of the box and you're seeing potentials and decisions and opportunities to make and these opportunities often have you know 10x 100x way greater returns than just grinding for another hour and last thing that i want to include is grounding so getting in barefoot you know just walking barefoot in nature stepping into grass um stepping into you know on the beach whatever this is why this makes you so relaxed when you go to the beach it's because we place ourselves in direct contact with the earth's naturally conductive services and this then helps you exchange electrons. It's great for reducing stress, for um, heightening immunity, it has a ton of different benefits. Nutrition is pretty easy. So I just eat whole foods, primarily animal-based, but I do include quite a lot of fruits and I stay low carb throughout the day. Later on in the day, I'll have some more fruits to uh, pave the way for a restful sleep. Then in terms of sleep optimization, you want to make sure that your room is either pitch black, you wear a sleeping mask, preferably making the room pitch black. Uh, following the three two one rule so stopping to eat three hours before bed stopping to drink two hours before bed and stopping using devices one hour before bed uh, planning your next day in advance so you don't start thinking about it while you are in bed and um, there's one more thing yeah having low lights later on in the day so red lights uh, red blue light blockers can help with that as well next in terms of mental habits one huge thing i've really worked on incorporating lately is figuring out the balance between being extremely hard on yourself and being extremely easy on yourself. And I think the middle line in that is the practice of radical self-compassion while being relentless in what you're doing. So you attack everything ferociously, but at the same time, whenever you slip up, whenever you don't do things as fast as you would like, whenever you don't do things in general the way that you would like them to do, just be completely accepting of yourself and the current state that you're in and just keep developing. 
then throughout the day, there's only two real modes that I am in. I'm either in self-actualization, creating the best version of myself by getting in the workouts, you know, doing the habits that set me up to have a good day, um, reading, meditating, these types of, of things. And at the same time, or after that, it's really about self-transcendence. It's about how can I serve more people? How can I help more people? How can I give more? The less you can worry about your own thoughts and feelings and analyze those, the happier you'll ultimately be. Last habit on the mental space is always assuming certain traits and certain or ways of being that I like to embody. I've spoken about this before in videos around your core identity, but there's a certain way that we perceive ourselves. And if we can actively program that, then we more easily take on the traits that we want to embody. And for me, in this stage of my life right now, there's three core ways of being that I want to embody as much as possible. The first one is being limitless, so not seeing any potential or limitations in potential for both myself but also for my clients. Being relentless, so attacking life as much as I can, serving other people as much as I can, not worrying about myself as much as I can. And then being in constant abundance, not seeing any lack anywhere in any area of my life. Let's move on to the spiritual side of things. So the first thing is kind of in between mental and spiritual, but it's really seeing my being as an alchemist or a reality creator, someone who has complete and utter control of whatever is happening around him in his external reality, whatever is going on in his own life, and totally taking absolute ownership of whatever is occurring and understanding that everything flows for me to some extent and I have a power to influence that. Next thing is studying. So understanding a lot of the higher level principles in life so studying universal law, studying religious, spiritual texts, all of these things have helped me become way more powerful in creating my own reality. And then the last thing is tapping into silence. So that is through meditation, that is through prayer, that is through fasting. These different tools allow you to get closer to God or the source or, you know, the collective consciousness, infinite intelligence, whatever you want to name the thing where people get their their information from outside of you know, what other people have already kind of put into their field of awareness the things that we just source from from the ether you need silence to be able to tap into that and you see this with all the greatest thinkers in history they have all sought high levels of of solitude at one point in their life and uh, that has probably been the most profound thing that i've been able to do because once you seek that silence, you'll be a lot more aware of your own behavior and what is happening around you. And that awareness ultimately is everything because when you are aware, you see things. And when you see things, you have power to change the things that you that you see. So, yeah, I uh, hope this uh, answers the request. I hope this video is helpful for you. And um, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow.